In today's video, we are going to do a garden recap up here at the Northern Michigan Garden. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and Rod has been up to so many projects this summer, so I thought it would be nice to go ahead and show you the various little garden spaces that he has been working on, just to show you the progress of how they've done. Also, we had talked earlier in the summer about some of the deer issues that we'd been having, so we'll kind of take a look at that as well. Uh, and then we're going to end the video with one of the gardens we did, I think it's been two years now, and it is just really coming into its own and just looking gorgeous. So let's go ahead and take a walk to the gardens. Such an important part of a fall garden is ornamental grasses. And this one here is a miscanthus grass called Strictus. Uh, we carry one that's called Little Zebra, which is a smaller version of this particular plant. Um, but I just love the coppery red plumes on this gorgeous ornamental grass. In addition to those beautiful plumes, it's got great foliage as well. So it's green and you can see like these little splotches throughout. So even when it's not blooming, it's got really great texture here on the foliage. We also have another miscanthus grass. This would be similar to possibly here on sunrise. Um, and I'm not sure what this exact variety is, but it's it's got beautiful texture, beautiful form but it's a super late bloomer. So here in Michigan, we really will never see the plumes on this grass, uh, but it does look really nice in this garden. So we are a zone 5B where we're at, just to kind of give you an idea of the various plants that we can plant here in our 5B garden. We'll head on across the walkway here, the drive, and show you just a few more of the grasses and how they just really, they look like little fireworks up against the woods back there. Just such a pretty looking grass. You can see the sun patients, they're still holding on and holding on gorgeous. So these did have a little bit of deer damage earlier in the season, but they have come back after we used our Bobex on it and have not had any more issues with deer since we did put that Bobex on some of the plants that were being browsed. Rod's enjoying a few moments here, sitting on the porch, relaxing. It's actually 80 degrees here, the beginning of October, which is so unlike weather in Michigan. So while he's relaxing, we'll go check out the fruits of his labor. So I'm walking on the new deck that he created here on the side of the cottage. And as we look down from the upper level, you can see the various tiers of the gardens that he uh, had built. So before these tiers were built, it was a hill and we'll kind of pan over that just kind of, it's really almost like a cliff that just goes right down and over. It's very steep, not even walkable because of the steepness of it. Unless of course you're a deer, I suppose. They make their way up and down. Uh, so what we did is we created some definitive flower beds in here and planted them. And basically it's just to hold the soil and to create layers as we head down to the lake. Oh, we have a little bug just kind of enjoying the video here, stealing the show. Uh, so the first little layer here is just what it is, a very little layer. And there is the Mahogany Monster Corbels along with some Hacklinocloa grass. And just kind of a nice little splash of foliage color really is all that that first little strip is doing. As we take a look down and over, that's about a four foot drop there. Uh, we were pretty intentional about choosing plants that were going to be deer resistant. Um, you notice I didn't say deer proof, deer resistant, uh, because I actually know plant is actually deer resistant if the plants are hungry enough. In this level here, there's a lot of foliage color going on with the heuchera and uh, pulmonaria and brunera. There's some bleeding heart in there, um, along with some really gorgeous polymonium our Jacob's Ladder. So really a lot of foliage texture and color, although most of these plants all do put on some flowers at some point. So a lot of spring color there with the Bernera and the Pulmonaria. Uh, the Jacob's Ladder that will give us late spring, early summer color. And then there are a few astilbes which will give us more summer color. So I'm really excited to see what this garden does next year because this year really we haven't got to see the full cycle of color, but the plants are doing very well um, from when they were planted. I think it was around mid-July, beginning of July or so. So the plants are doing beautiful. So this will be an exciting space to watch next year as it continues to fill out and to grow. The very first year we bought this cottage was in 2020 and Rod had started from top down 
ripping out all of the landscape. So we left nothing in here that the previous owners had. So this garden here is now in its third year and it really is looking quite nice. That Hacklin Ocloa all gold grass is beautiful. You can see we put a few sun patients in there for some consistent splash of color. Right now there's some anemone, the pink you're seeing blooming. It's fallen in love sweetly. So this garden, he did a really good job of always having something in bloom from let's say May until here we are in October. Also in front here, we have more anemone blooming. Just anemone is such a beautiful pink color. I just love how that also just kind of sways in the breeze. This little garden area is kind of growing into itself. So we have a rhododendron there that, that actually did come with the cottage. So we left that and trimmed it way back. Problem is, is we forgot to put fencing around it. So the deer ate the buds. So we have not gotten to enjoy it uh, blooming yet. So we need to make sure we get some fencing around it this winter. There are some hydrangeas. These are the bobo hydrangeas and they are just kind of at that filling out state. These, these actually have been in here for two years and they don't get a ton of sun. So they're not putting on a ton of growth. Um, but they should be just nicely the size of underneath that window once they are mature. So kind of having that rhododendron and then the two hydrangeas was the thought for this space here. You can see Rod did a little fall transformation there with a lighted hanging basket. He got that all planted up. So that has the fall mums in it along with some Lismachia, Creeping Jenny and Oh, looks like he's got a few um, slosha in there as well. Again, color you're seeing is the anemone along with, that's the firelight tidbit hydrangea there in the background. And that's looking really beautiful. We'll just at its pink stage right now. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you, these beautiful Jacob's Ladder. So they'll bloom in the spring and look at the foliage absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna put the name on the screen of what that one is because right now i'm having a a block i think it's something canary or something feather so we'll we'll put the name of it on because it's such a beautiful beautiful jacob's ladder you can see here a few more sun patients there in bloom lemon coral sedum always looking so nice uh, someone had asked me before if that's an annual or a perennial. Lemon coral sedum is actually an annual, but you may get little pieces of it that will come back year after year. So it's not a promise, but depending on where you're at, what your zone is, you may get some of it to come back. Uh, and here's an example of just a little piece that's trying to, trying to become a new plant. Cone flowers are pretty much done. Definitely gonna leave all those spent blooms on for now because the birds really enjoy the seeds of cone flowers. So that's personal preference if you trim them or if you leave the seed pods on, but we're gonna leave it because there's a lot of birds. And we like to do a lot with um, birding up here, putting up uh, bird feeders and such. As we make our way down the hill, you can see that the Heliopsis, they're pretty much done. The Allium millennium are done, but still have some great texture with the circular little um, seed heads there. Polka dotted is the pulmonaria. This little bed here has a lot of the opening act flocks in it, so more earlier season color, um, but we do put a few cladiums in, that way there is always some consistent color going on. Here is the bed that Rod most recently did, and I don't know if you want to really call it a bed or a border, but this is doing fabulous. There's the Hacklinocloa all gold grass, along with the Heuchera wildberry. And then as we continue down a little bit where it gets a little steeper, he did the Ajuga. This is part of the Feathered Friends series of Ajuga. And ideally that's gonna fill in that space once the garden is mature or once the, once the plants are mature. Front garden space, this was redone in 2020 and it's filling out absolutely beautifully now. We've got the bobo hydrangeas that are looking super. The sun patients, they're holding on. We haven't gotten cold yet, so that's why they're continuing to do so well. 
as well as the cone flowers are also just hanging in there and really putting on a gorgeous show. This little garden box or bed is full of bubblegum petunias doing beautifully. These were jasper at one point, but then they built the deck and kind of ruined the petunias. So Rod just shoved, I believe he said 70 pots in this little space. No, he only needed about seven, but because we had them and we were going to throw them away, he just jammed them in because he wanted instant color and gratification and he definitely got it. Making our way across the front deck here into the other garden bed areas. This gives you an idea of just how steep those different retaining walls are. A lot of green right now this time of year because it is fall and things are starting to kind of fall asleep a little bit. Um, but everything is growing well and filling in really nice. The sun patients are still holding on with a little bit of color on this side, although. They're not getting enough sun, so that's why we're seeing a little bit of a splotchy color pattern going on. And then in this little triangular bed, more sun patients a still be. There's some Bergina or Bergina in there, some Heliopsis. So those two all filling out really nice. So I'm excited to see how they do going into next year, these new beds. For those of you who watched, I think it was two years ago, we did a wall or just a, a hillside of ajuga, and that ajuga is doing good, holding the bank, filling in nicely. That too is eaten by deer, but bounced back perfectly once we kind of got the deer out of the way. All right, top down, we'll take a look here. You can see also there's some beautiful cordial cherry begonias. But this bed, like I said, was planted in 2020 and definitely is filling out now and really is looking like a true filled out garden space. So next year we were saying we may not need to do as many annuals in here uh, just because the perennials are filling out and doing so wonderful. Those are the bobo hydrangeas you're seeing. There's also a few of the invincible mini mauvette. Where are they? Invincible garnetta. I don't know, a smooth hydrangea anyhow. Putting on some new blooms, doesn't that look pretty? We'll cross over here the drive and take a look at just a couple more beds. These were done in 2021. So these beds mostly are going to be a two year old bed. So let's take a look at how the plants are doing there. So the top bed has the Carl Forrester grass, which is looking really nice here in the fall. We have some of the limelight uh, no, excuse me, little lime punch hydrangeas along the back. So those will get about four foot tall when they're mature, four to five foot. So that will be a huge hedgerow of hydrangeas as they continue to grow. Uh, we also have some Let's Dance Can Do, and those did really good this year. Nice flowers, beautiful color, and they're holding on so beautifully here in the fall as well. Some Dianthus lining the front, which is our early season color. This poor hasta, no matter what, this is the one that the deer just keep going after. And that's fine. That can be its salad bar, the one hasta, as long as it leaves everything else alone, which it seems to be doing a pretty good job of. You can see we've got some more anemone back in there blooming. Some beautiful lavender still blooming as well. And then in the back is some nice tall phlox. So the deer did get those tall phlox earlier in the season the little pokes of purple you're seeing there. So we did have to wait for those to reflush out, which they did, and put on some more blooms. This bed here, there's a lot of daylilies and the deer ate all the flowers off the daylilies. So that was kind of sad. So we really didn't get a lot of color in this little space with the exception of these torchlight coleus, which are doing wonderful creating just a massive hedge. And the last little garden bed here we're gonna show is right up in front. And this is what I like to call the red, white, and blue garden. So we have a flag up there. And so the plants that we planted in this bottom level were reflecting the colors primarily of red, white, and blue. And it was really funny this weekend, we had commented on how this little section of the garden, this red, white, and blue is just as vibrant and as beautiful as, as it was around the 4th of July. So we've obviously had a very mild, warm fall this year in Michigan, 
and the annuals have held on and are continuing to just shine and be beautiful. If you have any questions or comments on anything you've seen in this garden, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. If you're new to our station, Garden Crossings is a mail order nursery. We ship our plants across the United States, as well as having a local store in Zeeland, Michigan. We'd love to have you either stop into the store or order online if there's something you are looking for. We are a proven winner's destination garden center. So we would love to talk to you about all of your favorite proven winter plants, as well as so many more. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.